So I'm not any less lazy than you. But I worked out another system from trial and error. I made myself little rules that I live by. Don't take them for granted. There's a few words you should never say to a girl ever again in your life. Me too. Me too. Where do you want to go out tonight? Well, wherever you want. That's getting lazy because you don't want to think. And that gets you in trouble. If you want to fly a plane, you're not going to have the passenger take over when you get lazy. If you're a captain of a ship, you're the captain. So if you have a relationship, you have to lead. That's what lead is all about. It's not easy. It sounds easy as just a word. But you have to figure out. You don't want to do dishes? Get a dishwasher. Get paper plates. Figure it out. We're living in, in, in a world where you can figure all these things out. If I don't want to do something, I'm not going to do it just to please her. I'm, it ends up breeding resentment. And you're honest. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to clean the apartment. I'll hire a cleaning woman. Cost me 50 bucks and it's over. Woman used to ask me, all you want me for is sex. I love that, I love that statement. I love it when they ask me. I go, well, let me think for a second. I have a back scratcher. <laughs> I have a cleaning woman. You know, you're right. <laughs> I don't need her to clean my house. I don't need her to wash the dishes. Mind you, scratching my balls isn't a bad thing, too. That's what you want. I tell this to every one of my students. You have to believe each one of us is on a train of life. It's going down the track. It starts the day you're born and it stops the day you die. Nobody can be on that train as long as you are. It stops at the stations you want it to stop at and lets on the people you want to let on. It's your train. You want to let somebody else take over to running it? Well, it's a hell of a decision. Nobody runs my train. Sometimes, you know, you sort of regret, you know, having that responsibility because it's a responsibility to run your own life. And that's what happens when you get lazy. When you get lazy, everything fucks up. When you get lazy in business, when you get lazy, even in your kitchen. I'm too lazy to go shopping and the food there looks a little green. I'll eat it anyway. You got sick because you were lazy. You fucked up your relationship because you were lazy. And men have a tendency to be lazy. I'm not saying don't be lazy. Just figure things out. Give yourself your own rules. What you want to do. Don't think about what the women are thinking. The happiest women are the ones that have men that know what they want. That's what women want. You know, let's go back to what we've heard about cavemen. They don't talk about cave women. They don't say the woman invented the wheel. Orville and Wilbur Wright weren't women. Most of the discoveries are done by men. Yeah, women have changed. Women want their own freedoms. Women want to they, they're, they're doing powerful jobs. But they still want to be taken care of. It's a natural way of evolution. It's a natural way that we are programmed. Look at the bikers. You got these dirty, greasy guys, and the women love them. Because they tell them what they want. They don't think of what the woman wants. As soon as you do, you're in trouble. Usually the first exercise I give 
is a focusing exercise. Because you're not focused. You, I tell you right now, you're not focused. I can tell you right away. You're not focused on what you want. Not what she wants, what you want. She's not going to want you because you don't know what you want. It, it, it sounds so stupid, but it's that simple. If you don't think you're a prize, then you're not. Who said they can't believe this guy said nice ass? Is you think you, you you're thinking that's what she's thinking? Listen, she spends a fortune of time buying clothes. She spends a fortune of money buying makeup. She spends hours in the bathroom. If you whoever has sisters here knows how long women spend. If I nailed you guys in the bathroom for an hour, you'd be kicking the door down for 45 minutes. <laughs> but they can spend one, two hours. What do they do there? I figure they arrange every pussy hair in the right way. <laughs> what the fuck are they doing there? They look at themselves in the mirror a thousand times. They play with their hair for hours. And you're worried she's going to think, he's, he had a nerve to have a nice ass. I think that's what they really want to hear. That's my opinion. But I don't care what they think they want to hear. I'm going to tell them what I think I want to say. Yeah, being direct is the only way. Anybody can deliver it. Yeah. You know, listen, anybody can deliver it. But I guarantee She's thinking, I'm glad he noticed. I'm glad he looked. I went, I don't remember, I was about um, two or three years ago, I went to a seminar in California. And my best friend that I grew up with lives in Los Angeles. So after the seminar was over, after I spoke, I got together with him and we went for lunch. So he took me to this really nice restaurant right in Malibu on the beach where the, the railing was against the boats and the water and the docks. And I sit down with him and it was like a rounded, it's like this kind of thing, rounded. And we're sitting at a table, I'm facing that way, he's facing that way and the water's right there. And I tell him like this, I says, look at the girl over there, look at the waitress. They all look like fucking sisters. Their tits are identical, all of them. Every woman coming in there were identical. Then there was this woman sitting behind about three tables back. Was she ever attractive? So I was staring at her. So every time she looked at me, I didn't move my eyes. So she tried looking away, and every time she kept looking at me, our eyes met. So she walks over to the table and says, excuse me, do I know you? And I said, no, but I'd like to. So she smiles. I said, I couldn't help but admiring how beautiful you look. So she smiled and sat down. And my friend says to me, you never stop, eh? <laughs> and I said, I can't help it. It's in my nature. Then after we finished eating, I kept looking at her the whole time. After we finished eating, I made a point to pass by her table. And I said to her, thank you very much. I hope I didn't offend you, but I enjoyed my meal only because I kept looking at you. She said, thank you so much. And she gave me her phone number. Why could she want that? I never thought that she'd give me her phone number. In a million years, I happened not to think about what she was thinking about. I might have said, maybe she thinks I'm a pervert. She could be right. 
But I didn't think too much about what she was thinking about. I was enjoying what I was looking at. You look at a beautiful car if you're into cars, or a beautiful motorcycle. I know there's a fellow here who came on a motorcycle. If you're looking at a beautiful bike, you don't think of what the motorcycle's thinking. You're digesting it, you're enjoying it. Same thing with the woman. You don't know her. She could be a mental case. You're enjoying what the visual experience is. I mean, there's a, you're going to hear a lot of speakers today, and I'll tell you, there's only one guy I have great respect for. And I don't mean to insult Sasha, but... <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I don't mean it like that. I mean, Sasha's a, a nice kid, and he's learning, and he's got good intentions, but the only guy that I have the kind of respect for out of all the guys I know in the industry, is Alan. And, you know, I'll tell you something. Maybe he doesn't want me to tell you this, but I didn't ask him, so we're going to hang out together in Holland. And I explained to him why. I said, you know, when I hang out with you, it's like being with a guy like me. I don't have to think or explain why I'm doing things. It's like being on vacation on vacation. Yeah, I get all the time from my friends, stuff like you're saying. You know, maybe she's thinking, I, 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 it doesn't enter my mind. Naturally, it doesn't enter my mind. I'm so focused. When I look at a good-looking woman, first thing I'm focused on is what's attracting me to her. I look at, check out every part of her. And then I'm thinking about how I'm going to be fucking her. What kind of pussy is she going to have? How wet is she going to get? I can smell when a woman's getting wet. And I don't think it's a special thing for me. I'm in tune with my senses. I think you all can do it. In the animal kingdom, when the woman gives out a scent to attract men, you think it stops when it comes to human? Oh, they, did. they didn't create us like that because we're different. Who, who's the first one who has a question? Go ahead. I, I do. I have a ton of them. I do. Well, <clears throat> I'll tell you. The most important example that I give is for you to focus on what you want. It's very important. It sounds like I'm a teacher or something like that. It's not that. I give people the first homework assignment I give them as an exercise. Well, I give two right away. The first one is they have to tell me only a week later. And all my homework assignments start the same way. Don't take any shortcuts. Do them exactly the way I ask. Because we have a tendency of doing what we want. But if you want me to help you, you got to do it the way I say it. The first one is, tell me what stays in your mind from what we've heard from the first session. But you can only do that about five days, minimum later, a week later, because I want you to digest it. The second one is, it's a focusing exercise. You know you've had a dream that you wake up from and you like the dream and you go back to sleep and you get back into it? Well, I call that dream scenario. Before you go to sleep at night, take five minutes, lie on your back. I put a cold washcloth on my eyes because I find, I don't know why, I find it, it calms me down and lets me focus easier. And I lie there and I think of a dream scenario. I think what I'd like to happen or what I'd like to do or whatever, whatever kind of dream scenario you have. You meet a girl, you go out here, you, uh, you fuck her, whatever. But the trick is, you have to get back into that same scenario three nights in a row. And if you don't, start again. Till you've accomplished getting back into that same dream scenario three nights in a row. And don't stop. Sometimes it takes guys months to do it. But this is how you start to focus on what you want. I mean, 
My dream scenario is very simple. I meet a girl, she's really hot, comes back to my apartment, I fuck her. Then the next night dream, she leaves, she goes and gets two of her friends, comes back, I fuck them all. <laughs> you know? I mean, that, that's my dream scenarios, okay? What can I tell you? Dream whatever you want. But this is focusing. It's an exercise how you focus on what you want. And none of those focusing exercises say, what is she thinking about? Sorry, it's just not there. When you realize a woman wants a man who knows what he wants, you'll ask any woman, she'll tell you the same thing. It's not me that's just saying it. Ask any woman. She wants a guy who knows what... She wants to have confidence in him, trust. I give out another exercise. I make everybody write out in word. There's a reason for that, too. An essay, a book report, a letter of recommendation about yourself as third person. Using your name like... I think David X is the nicest guy in the world and he likes helping people. Whatever you want to say. And the reason we do it in Word is because we change your name to this person and I make it a questionnaire sheet. There's a header and a thing at the bottom which later on you use that to, to give out to women to get their phone number and address a whole other way. But the first thing is you have to write. And you know what the funniest thing is? They send it to me and I correct it. And 90% of the time, I have to tell you honestly, 90% of the time, I like the person who wrote it better than they like themselves. Now, that's a funny thing. Why should I like you better than you like you? Nobody knows you better than you. So yeah, we're too shy to say how much we like ourselves. Why? If you say how what a nice guy you are and how proud of, of yourself, a woman's going to like you more. Well, that's a concept you can't understand because you're going to think they can't like you because they like him better than you. Maybe not you, but I'm just joking. I'm just bugging you now, so don't take it badly, okay? Instead of thinking what the woman is thinking about. Think about what you're thinking about. I don't want you to do what I do. Think about what kind of nice guy you are. You know, I'm not dealing, and I won't deal with any weirdos or creeps who want to stalk or hurt women. I don't believe in that. So if I get any inkling a guy is like that, I stop dealing with him immediately. Not that I'm goody two-shoes. But at my stage in my life, I don't want complications or problems. It's as simple as that. Who, who's the one that, the other question? He chickened out, it's okay. Focusing is so important. David? <laughs> when uh, women say uh, you're a nice guy, that normally, in my experience, leads to the next statement, let's just be friends. When women say what? You're a nice guy. It normally is followed up by let's just be friends. How would you say oh, being I love a nice that. guy is good? I, I love that question. I really, that's the second question I love the most. I'll tell you something. I think I know how to be friends with a guy. If I was your friend and we went out together and I saw a woman and you were afraid to approach her, I'd approach her for you and I'd want you to get fucked. I think I'd be a good friend. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Now when women say to me, I want to be friends, I go, okay, do you know how to be friends? See, I take friendship very seriously like I take a lot of things. My father taught me to have a good friend, you have to be a good friend. 
Now, how can this woman be my good friend? Well, number one, you have some hot friends to introduce me to? No, they don't want to introduce you. They want to keep you on a string and use you. What, do you want to go to a show with me? You want to go out to dinner with me? You want to cook for me? You want to clean my house? You can be my friend. What do you want me for as a friend? Oh, you're a nice guy, I want to be your friend. No, what she's saying to you is, you're a nice guy, I want to use this shit out of you. <laughs> do you know how to be a friend? How many men friends have you had? It's a commitment. You want to be my friend? Well, where are your credentials? Why do you want to be my friend? For what reason? You don't want to fuck me, so what do you want? I tell them, I'm not looking to make friends. I got tons of friends and I take my friendships very seriously and the spectrum of my friends is so vast and I don't want to bring in more people into my friendship because like I said, I take it very seriously and friendship takes my time and my energy. So I know what it is to be a friend. Does she know what it is to be a friend? And most of the guys I talk to, if you know anybody that I deal with, I become friends with them really quickly because I like the guys. The ones I don't like, I don't want to be their friend either. But if I want to be your friend, you can't get a better friend in your life than me. I'm a real friend. I'll give you advice. I'll help you. I want only the best for you. If I know a girl that you like, I'll try to get her to fuck you. That's a friend. <laughs> what is she going to do for you to be your friend? I'll let you take me. You know, I have, a, I have a funny story. A lot of you guys know what an MGB is? Okay. What's that? Oh, yeah? MGC? Oh, wonderful. I have a B. I have it only 38 years. So one day, I'm picking up a girl on my MG, and she says, any guy that drives a sports car is an idiot. <laughs> okay. So I continue with her, and she says to me, listen, I got a party to go to tonight. I want you to drop me off there, and then pick me up after the party, and I'll let you take me out for dinner. Hmm. I must be an idiot if I'm even <laughs> listening to this. I go, did you feel that? She goes, what? I says, just hop out and check my back wheel if there's a flat or something. <laughs> she hops out and she left her purse there. So I take her purse and I toss it out the window and I drive away. <laughs> I know, I was a bastard to do that. What's that? But you understand, it, it's very simple. She wanted to be my friend. Now, if she would have said, take me to the, to the party, we'll have dinner, and after you come back to my place and we'll fuck like crazy, I might have thought of that. How many women have gone out with you guys and just used you? They had no intention of sleeping with you. I keep telling guys, ask yourself one question when a woman talks to you and says things to you. And that is, would I say to her what she's saying to me? And 100% of the time I get from all the guys, I would never say that to them. But they're allowed to say that to you because you're stupid. You're thinking about what they're saying. They don't respect you, and if they don't respect you, you don't respect them, and you don't want to be with them. Honesty, trust, and respect. It's a simple rule. Give yourself a couple of rules. Rule number one, rule number two. Am I the most important person in this relationship? Or she thinks she is. I don't want to be with her. Oh, I've heard guys tell me, yeah, she won't give me a blowjob. I had a friend, he went out with this girl for a while, 
He used to tell me she'll do everything, but she won't blow. So after he stopped seeing her, I said, you mind if I go out with her? He said, yeah, but remember, she doesn't give blowjobs. I was in bed with her. I put my dick right in her fucking mouth. And I came right down her fucking throat. I tell some guys, he says, you know, I was 35 years old before I found that a girl's ears were free hearing. I thought they were fucking handles. I tell them all, in my bed, there's no such word as no. Go to somebody else. If she doesn't want to make me as happy as I'm going to make her, what for? A woman's never going to dictate to me in bed unless she's a stenographer and writing out some notes. You have to know what you want. Focus on what you want. Focusing is very important. It sounds like words. But it's reality. It's your life. And don't ask your friends, because they're all liars. I've seen it so often. You know, I used to go out when I was young. I used to go out with my friends. And when I drove, the next day I'd get, get a call. You're a real prick. Where the fuck did you go? We, we were looking for you all night long. So I said, I left with a chick. What do you want from me? Well, you left us here. So next time, take your own car. And then when I went in their car, because they thought they were smarter than me, okay, you come in our car this time. So I picked up a chick, and they go, where'd you go? We were looking for you all night to take you home. I go out, I was focused. I'm going out to get laid. To find a girl and get laid. That's what I was going out for. I didn't know he just arrived there and back. It's like going to an amusement park. I never thought of it that way. So, the less and less I went out with people. I went out by myself. I did my own hunting by myself. If my buddy was having trouble and wanted me to help him out, fine. I, these rules have to be established before. Don't presume. I didn't think for him. I figured, geez, if I get lucky and go home with a chick, he should be very happy that I did. Let him try the same thing. And then I, I was in a seminar in California. That time I was in L.A. Or was it the time after that? I'm not sure, but <clears throat> there was a guy in the room and I said to everybody, who in the room looks over at a guy and thinks the guy's a real smart aleck? And they all pointed to the same guy, so I brought him on stage. So he was one of the guys that worked with one of the other guys who were talking. And he was trying to make it like, make everybody feel bad by how much he got laid, and they didn't. And I thought the guy was an asshole and a liar. So I started asking him questions. Ten minutes later, he ran off stage because you he, 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 he just saw how he was lying. He wasn't getting laid more than anybody else in the room. Now, what he felt better because he made everybody else feel shitty? that they're doing something wrong. I don't like to do the wrong thing. I don't like to say the wrong thing. It's not wrong what you guys are doing or saying or thinking. You just have to make a correction. Don't think what she's thinking about. You're not, you're not her father. You're not her brother. You know, a lot of guys, the way they were brought up, they want to be the protector, the knight in shining armor. This is England, after all. You had the knights at a round table. They, 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 they protect their princess. <clears throat> they want to save that damsel from that bastard who wants to fuck him. You. <laughs> that 
that's, you'd be surprised how many guys think like that. Oh, all I want to do is fuck her, I'm not nice. So she'll go to the other guy over there who wants to fuck her, and he's not nice either, but she'll fuck him. Who had a question? You did? Yeah, I'm at the point where I think, when I listen to what you're talking about, and you talk about moving Say it out, again. When I'm, you, when I'm you, sorry, when you talk about the uh, moving out the zone where you feel like, you know, you're still trying to perceive what's a woman thinking, what's going on in her head and all of that. And I feel like that still takes a while to sink in. I can hear this, but it's still going to take a while to sink into my mindset. And I feel like my question is, right now, should I be looking to meet somebody or should I be looking to date a few chicks and actually really let this kind of permeate my mindset? Because I think... If Both. I met some, if Both. I, if I met someone right now, would I still be going in with this kind of semi-insecure, undeveloped mindset? And would I then end up having a relationship dynamic where... I, I, I said both. And I'll tell you what you do. It's a little exercise. Take a pen and paper, a little pad with you. And when you meet her, or when you're thinking about what she's thinking about, write it down on a pad. Everything that you think she's thinking about. And when you start talking to her, say, this is an exercise from a coach. I want to know if any of these things you were thinking about. And that'll give you a shock of your life. Not one thing that you're thinking about, she was thinking about. So if you want to, you want to kill that really quickly, take a little pad with you. Write down everything you think she's thinking about. And ask her, were you thinking any of these things? And I guarantee she'll say, not one. What does that tell you? It'll tell you that, lucky, you're not a girl. Because none of these guys would get laid. You want to stop thinking stupid things? Ask them what you're thinking about. Show them, say, hey. Very simple. I'm not telling you not to respect women. I'm telling you don't do their thinking for them. You got enough trouble thinking for yourselves. Um, do you want to give the fellow down there? He's, I think he's tried to ask a question a couple of times. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a little exercise. Try it. You'll probably walk away and go, that fucking David X knows what he's talking about. <laughs> David, uh, dealing with objections, when you approach a woman and you tell her what you like about her, you know, whatever, whatever line you're going to use, uh, when she says she's got a boyfriend or she's with someone, how do you handle that? How do you progress that? Well, if she's with your boyfriend, you better be stronger than him. I don't try to approach women with their boyfriends. I, I actually have approached women. I went one time, I saw this really good looking girl walking with this guy and I looked at her and I said, he's a lucky fucking guy. And he smiled and she just glowed. And I said, if you dump him, give me a call right away. You can say stuff like that because it's the way you feel. She's not with a boyfriend. She might be alone. You're approaching her alone. You know what, if you approach her alone, tell her the same thing. You know, I have so many cases in my life when I just told a woman what I thought. And they all were, I, I didn't, I never got slapped. I never got turned off. I got, oh, all you're thinking about is sex. And I said, yeah, and let me think about that for a second. <laughs> yeah, that's all I'm thinking about. <clears throat> There's a guy in the United States. I don't know if you guys know about him or not. He's called Dr. Oz. Now, I watched five minutes of his show, and I stopped when I heard what he was talking about because it intrigued me. He said that 50% of all men think about sex all the time. And 25% of all women think about sex all the time. And then... 
I read in one of those Cosmo magazines many years ago, and I asked that couple of the girls last night if they believed or they heard about the statistic. I said, I heard that 60% of all women never achieve an orgasm in their lifetime. And they all said, yeah, I know that. Now, it's very hard for any guy to understand that because there's not a guy in this room that can't have an orgasm. If he has a dick and some balls, he gets an orgasm. It's as simple as that. But when a woman can't have one, what does it mean? Well, there's a lot of reasons. But the problem is, if you put the statistics all together, obviously everybody in this room is in that 50% bracket that think about sex all the time. So that's not bad. And what it means is that one out of every four women are easier to get than the rest. So now, Jesus, 25% of all the women out there are fuckable. That's not bad odds. Now you see, the way I looked at it is, there's 100 guys here. Out of 200 women, I could get 125. For sure. That's the way my mind worked first when I heard these statistics. But it's good odds. You don't want everyone. There's a lot that, like he said, want to be your friend. For what reason? What do you need from me? You need a chauffeur? You need somebody to watch your cat, your dog? Feed your budgie when you go out of town. What do you need me for? To have ulterior motives. And then there's another problem with women. Men don't have that problem. They have a biological clock that starts ticking. The average is when they hit around 25 years old, 28 years old, it starts ticking. At 30, it's going tick, 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 tick. They have a different agenda. They want to find a guy to have a family. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, either you marry me or I'm leaving you. Don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out. It all depends what you want. Yeah, I heard, you only care about what you want. Yeah, that happens to be the truth. It's my life. Yeah, I only care about what I want. That's right. I really don't care about what people I don't know want. And I'm not going to get married and settle down with a woman because she wants me to do it. When you say it that way, it sounds so stupid. You decide whenever you want. I hope I answered your question. Uh, who was first here? Um, David, uh, you said uh, you're basically the same as us, um, but you mentioned there are two differences. Uh, you started fucking younger than us, and you are better organized. What do you mean by being better organized? Well, it's simple. Um, I'll tell you. Organized or tricks or whatever. I have a, like, in my apartment, and I'd say to a girl, come up, come to my place, I have a drink. She goes, you don't know what I want. I go, I have everything you want. So I compiled a small shopping list of what guys should have in their apartment. It's very simple. A couple of different liquors and a couple of different mixes, and you can make something, a fantastic mix, and you can say, look at the way it looks, like a, a tequila sun, sunrise with uh, grenadine and orange juice, and it separates in the glass. I have white wine and red wine. I always have two kinds of white wine, one sweeter, one not so sweet. And it's very simple the way I buy my wines. I'm not a wine expert. I go into the liquor store and I tell them, 
give me the cheapest wine with the highest alcohol content. <laughs> Finished. That's the way I buy the liquor. I buy a bottle of vodka, a bottle of tequila, a bottle of Kahlua or Tia Maria coffee liqueur in case they want a coffee with a, with a liquor in it. I buy a bottle of Coke so I can make them a rum and Coke. I buy a bottle of rum. And I have practically everything they could want. I have beer in the fridge too. And I went ahead. That's why I started with the romance novels. I knew that women love romance novels. And what I do is when I make you guys buy a romance novel, I tell you, read it, because that's a punishment. And then what I tell you to do is gift wrap it in any kind of wrapping paper. I have something special. I tell you, do it with the comics of the newspaper. And on the second date with any girl, you give it to her as a gift. It's a pocketbook, cost you pennies. And I tell her, this book is because I was thinking of you. I don't say I read it, because I don't lie to them. And every girl on the third date fucks you for sure. I went out and I bought a gross, a dozen dozen, and I brought it to a place, had them gift wrapped, and every single one worked. It's good odds for me. And I was doing that before I even started helping guys. It was one of my organizational tricks. And you know what they say to their friends? He's so romantic. I'm not romantic, I'm smart. Oh, he's so romantic. <laughs> then I gave him little keychains, teddy bear keychains. I said, Every time you look at it, you'll think of me, I'll be your teddy bear. Oh, he's so romantic. I didn't want to spend $10 on a rose or a gift. You give them a gift, and they'll tell their friend, and, the guys, and their friends will say, he wants to fuck you, so he bought you something. You give them a little teddy bear, and you know what the friends say to, to them? He's so romantic. I have for my advanced students a whole bunch of stuff like that, which is easy. That's why I say you don't have to be romantic if you're smart. You just have to. And, and I'm smart and I'm cheap. I went out with so many women, I didn't want it to cost me a lot of money. I even have, I forgot about this until you mentioned it now, I even have for my students to help them out. Where is he? He's gone. <laughs> One of you come up here, anybody. Come, come. If you want it, you have to buy it. But right now, put it on. Okay. Yeah, put it on. Always oh, good. And take a look at what it says. What does it say on the other side? Evil X, rule number one. <laughs> That's a good one, actually. <laughs> can I have it? No. <laughs> you can buy them. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, have them available through Sasha for you. But this is only a reminder. And I tell you to wear it. And when the girl says to you, what is that around your neck? You tell her one thing only. I can only tell you about it after I've slept with you. <laughs> this is, what is it for? It's to keep you focused. What? Oh, huh. I thought you were saying something. It's to focus. It's like the focusing exercise. It only means more to you when you start focusing because you forget. I did this because most of the guys have a problem with focusing. 
and they forget. They forget the two most important rules. Rule number one and rule number two. They're that kind of important. When you get these two rules, you don't need any help anymore. It's as simple as that. This is the key to everybody. Two simple rules. When you get it, it's over. Oh, how come it's so simple? How come I didn't get it? Better than magic words. And I've had lots of students tell me, not only has it helped them in their dating life, but it's helped them around everything, business, school. Don't try to anticipate what other people are saying. How many times have you thought, oh, that he wants to tell me this, and when you find out it wasn't anything you wanted to say? He wanted to this is the same thing with women. You don't know what they're thinking about. Don't try. Did you? <clears throat> this is a good movie for you to rent and watch. That Mel Gibson movie, the one where he, where he all of a sudden gets hit on the head or something, and he starts hearing women talking in his mind. He's like in shock. That's a movie. That really says everything. Everybody who's knowledgeable knows about it. You know, I was interviewed by Alan and he asked me a question about Tiger Woods. I don't think Tiger Woods did anything wrong. He wanted a fuck. The only thing he made a mistake was he got married. If he stayed single, he'd be, oh, eligible bachelor. He stayed, because he was married, he's a dirty dog. So, it, you know, in my mind, it doesn't work. He likes fucking. Why did you get married? David, you touched on it, uh, David, you touched on it earlier about history a psychologist. Most of my experience has been a woman saying, all men are bastards, I've had a bad divorce, my last boyfriend hit me. You know. So how, how do you approach and handle that one? Simple. Are you talking about women had a bad experience before you and now they Yeah. I like that too because I, you see I have something else worked out for that. I've never I been able to women, get my head on that one at all. I tell women like this, I said, listen, if you want to deal with me, I want to explain something. We're born, we start off with a clean slate. Women have a thousand points. Every time they abuse you or make you feel bad, they lose some points in your mind. By the time you're all where you are now, you don't trust women and you think they're all liars. And you're right. So what I tell them is like this. I said, you know, I don't want to pay for his crime or his crime or his crime. If you can't deal with me fresh and new, then I don't want to know you. I don't feel like being punished for what he did. And he did terrible things. He put his arms right up a girl. I don't want to get into that. I don't want to pay for anybody else's crimes. If you can't deal with me fresh, open and you'll find that's what's happening sometimes i had a, ba a boyfriend like me who dumped them when they wanted to get married and now they're going to punish you for it because ain't punishing me i'm out of there yeah <laughs> when you're honest you go i'm not taking that shit i don't want that shit i don't want to be punished for what he did or what he did or what he did You have to read her the riot act. Tell her what you want. I want an open relationship. You, ha you have games to play. You have a set, set of rules I have to live by. Let me read those rules. Give me your list. Now, I can't live by those rules. You have a choice. 
just because she says. You have to convey to her what you want. Strong. Your conviction. No, I don't want to be punished for what other guys did to you. She might say to you, I had one guy, he shoved his dick so hard up my ass and he said he wouldn't and he lied to me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind. I tell you the truth, I don't mind if she punished.